Now that we've published the models to BIM 360 Docs, let's take a look at how we can use the new model coordination tool in BIM 360 to go ahead and coordinate those models, to bring them together, merge them, and look to see if there's any clashes between the elements in the different models. Now to do that, we're going to take a look in BIM 360 and within your folder, for example, we'll all have individual folders where we've been uploading things. You'll notice there's a special folder called Coordination Space. And what that's all about is it's a special place where if you put any models into that folder, there will be a clash detection run against those models to see if there's any conflicts between the elements in the models. So it's a special place. Anything you put in there has clash detection run automatically on it. This Coordination Space is really just a folder that you can add subfolders to if you like just to help you organize the different files in there. The truth is, though, anything you put into the Coordination Space folder will be compared to all the other models in the Coordination Space folder. So be uh, sparing about what you put in there. You don't want to put everything in there because that'll just overload the system with a lot of things you don't care about. So we're going to start out by just copying some of the models that we want to compare into the Coordination Space folder. So let's take a look at how we put models into the Coordination Space folder and run that clash detection. So I'm going to back off to my high-level folder. This is again where I've been uh, publishing the different models from Revit. And from here, what I'm going to do is select the different models that I want to compare with each other. So for example, I'm going to compare my architectural model with my structural model. And what I want to do is copy them into the Coordination Space folder to do that. You could move them, but I'm going to choose Copy, so I keep a version in each of the different places. I'll say Copy, and then I'll choose where I want to put them. I'm going to put them inside the Coordination Space folder at the highest level. Great, I can copy. Super. Once we've copied things into that folder, we can go ahead and just take a look to confirm there. Okay, but at this point, you're really not seeing anything special. They're just kind of hanging around in there. So we want to switch over to another tool, a new tool in BIM 360 called the Model Coordination Tool that will let us actually find the clashes. And to do that, I'm going to switch over by clicking the uh, little menu. It looks like nine dots to Model Coordination. And we'll take a look at what's available. Now, when you go to the Model Coordination tool, you'll find a lot of stuff out there. It can actually be a little bit overwhelming at first, depending on how many things you have inside your Model Coordination folder. Now, we each have our own individual Model Coordination space, so I can compare my models, you can compare your models, and we won't overlap with each other. So you'll probably need to start by just pulling down this menu in the upper right-hand corner and choosing to your Coordination space. It'll be named Coordination, then dash your name. And that's something we've just set up for you. So switch over to your space. Now, once you switched into your coordination space, you'll find that there are a number of tabs across the top of the interface. There's a Models tab, a Clashes tab, and a Views tab. And under the Models tab, you're going to find a listing of all the models that you've put into the model coordination space. But you're also going to find all the different views. The 3D views within those models are going to be listed here. Okay, so this is why it's important to create that 3D model coordination view. There's so many different 3D views you might have out there. You'll want to be able to very easily find the ones that you're going to be using containing the objects that you want to run the clash detection using. So again, the model coordination view is typically a view that doesn't include items that you don't worry about, things like furniture and people and plantings. It's the building elements that you want to check against each other to make sure they're not clashing. So once we go through and look at this list of different models, we can choose the models that we want to include. I'm going to go through and choose the architectural model, okay, the 3D model coordination. And I'm also going to go through and choose the structural model, the 3D model coordination. Super. Now, that is a useful thing for us to go ahead and think about. So let's go as a set. So let's view those. This will merge the two models together. If you have taken 220A and you are used to using the BIM 360 glue tool, kind of the predecessor to this interface, you might recognize it as merging the different models. Now, this view, this merged view, is so useful that I do want to go back to it again and again. So 
Let's go ahead and save this view. What I'm going to do is click on Save View. Okay, I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to call this, oh, what is this, Mixed Use Demo. And I'll call it Architectural and Structural. And I can save that away. I can choose whether I want to make that private. That's only going to be visible to me or whether I want to make that public, publishing it. If you publish it, then anyone within our project, anyone within our class could see that uh, coordination, that merging of the different models and kind of check out the clashes. I would actually recommend publishing it so we can kind of uh, kind of look at each other's work and just sort of see how things are doing. That'll actually help the, uh, the teaching team as they're trying to assist you. So I'm going to publish it. I'll save that view. It is now saved away and ready to use. Now, once you've saved the view, you can go through and look at the clashes between the different models that are saved in that view. To do that, you can move down from the list of models to the clashes in the left navigation bar. And when you will do that, you'll find there's a big list of clashes between all the different elements. Let me kind of spin that around a little bit and you can see the models here. Some of the model elements are in red, some of the model elements are green. Okay, that depends on which model they've come from. The red ones are the architectural ones, the primary model. Okay, and the structural uh, model is considered secondary. And we're clashing it against the architectural model. They're showing up in green. But there's a big list of clashes right here. We're going to go through and, you know, talk about really how to use that in just a few moments. In this window, you'll also find a button that'll show you the list of issues that are different clashes that use marked as being things that are worth uh, following up on and uh, tracking to make sure they do get resolved. Let's close this view up for just a moment and show you some of the other tabs that are available for you. There's the clashes tab in the model coordination tool. Now this gets to be a little bit overwhelming for all of the different 3D views in the models that you put in your model coordination folder. It's showing how many clashes are occurring between the different models. So you see I have the Audubon uh, architectural and structural models. There's clashes between those. I have the big hospital project. There's some clashes between those. And then I have a lot of different views from this mixed use project. And we have clashes between those. Now, this view can easily get overwhelming. So I'm not going to, well, I'm actually going to recommend against using this view very much. But you should know that it's here because it is really the definitive guide to what's available. The way to read this matrix is if, for example, I choose the mixed-use architectural model coordination okay, row, and then I move across to one of the other files right there. That's the mixed-use uh, structural. If I click this cell, it's going to bring up the clashes between the architectural model in the model coordination view and the structural one. Again, it's available in there, but I'm going to recommend that you don't do it that way. I prefer to kind of go at it through uh, working with one of your saved views. But this shows you everything that's available. Okay. The last tab I want to show you is the Views tab. And the Views tab has the different views that you've saved so far. You can see that I've saved a couple different views. The last one was this Mixed Use Demo Architectural Instructor. So I'm going to open it as a quickie way of getting back to the things that I wanted to take a look at. I'm just going to home view that, going to bring it up a little bit bigger. And now we can hit the Clashes button here and take a look at the Clashes. So as you're going through and trying to find the Clashes, the important thing to do is really think about just, oh, uh, just really each of the different Clashes and whether it's really something you care about or not. Let's start by just kind of walking you through the interface and we can think about the issue of what's a meaningful Clash and what isn't a meaningful Clash. Okay, so when we open the view containing the models to be compared, you're going to see that there's a couple of choices over here on the left-hand side. The primary model is what you consider, oh, this is the model um, that the interface is going to group the elements into, or it'll kind of show the elements grouped by pieces of that model. So for example, since I have the architectural model chosen as the primary model, what the interface is going to do is it's going to group things by the clashes for each of the different architectural elements. 
If I reversed it, if I switched it so the structural model was primary, okay, it would basically group things based on what clashes with each of these different structural elements. So you get to kind of choose whichever way is going to be better for you. Once you have the primary model selected and the secondary model, you can choose how you want to group them. Now, in terms of how they're grouped, things can be grouped by uh, all the clashes against a single object. Another way that's very useful is, as opposed to looking at just every wall individually, you can look at things based on different types. So what this is going to do is it'll group, for example, all the instances of six inch foundation slab together. So it'll show us all the clashes against anything that has that type. Oh, here are all the different clashes against any type of four and seven eighths inch one hour partition wall. This over here is going to show us all the clashes against any of the glazed curtain wall panels. Okay, so choosing how to group things can really help you in terms of sorting things out and trying to understand how to work with those. When you go through and you choose a specific type of clash, for example, I just chose all these glazed panels and they're showing up over there in the viewing pane, we can really uh, take a look at the individual clashes and let's just kind of walk you through what you can see here. You can see that overall the model's kind of ghosted out and what's happening is the elements that are involved in that clash are highlighted. So the things in this case that are in the architectural model okay, are showing in red because it's the primary model. The things in the structural model that are clashing with it are shown in green because it's the secondary model. So super. We can take a look at all those. As you look at those, you may need to do a little pivoting. Sometimes that helps. If you have a very dense model, you may not be able to see everything. You can also use the fit to view if you like. That'll just help kind of bring a specific type of problem into view. So let's switch, like for example, these interior core walls. And see it's highlighting those and I can fit to view if I want to or orbit it around. You can sort of see that I have some beams that are conflicting with those core walls that I've set up. Once you've chosen something, you could also just right click on the element and use pivot. And that's just going to basically change the center point. That may be helpful just as you rotate around and try and get a good perspective on where these are. Super. So now that we've basically identified the different clashes, you can see we have a big list of clashes over here. You might be feeling a little bit intimidated by the fact that there's a thousand and seventy of them, but what we're going to talk about next is how we start to classify those clashes. Because we're going to find out that a lot of them are things that we just really don't care about in terms of being fixed right away. Other things are more important. So we're going to tackle that one in the next video.